Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a Pleasant Sunday Smoke. And on this Pleasant Sunday Smoke, I am having a little bit of Mad Fiddler Flake by Cornell and Deal. Part of their Old Ones series, inspired by the works of Lovecraft, apparently. Um, the cosmic horror that is Mad Fiddler Flake is actually pretty delicious. I just recorded my review that will be posting this Wendness Day. Let me light this. Mm. And I did my first impressions last week. I was pretty positive, but kind of nonplus by this blend. I wasn't sure exactly what was going on. There were some flavors that I couldn't put my finger on. I think I've teased it all out now. I have a pretty good handle on it, and I'm pretty positive about this. I think you should check it out this Wednesday. Other business going on on the channel. Um, we will be continuing with the Replacing Elizabethan series. The blend that I'm working on right now is Telegraph Hill by GLPs. It's been interesting. It's been a really interesting process because I've already seen my opinions on Stratford change within that time period where I had three tins. Um, and then Telegraph Hill, which I initially liked more than Stratford when I did the original reviews, I liked less than Stratford when I first started smoking it again. And I think it really does show you how much familiarity breeds not contempt, but contentedness. Um, I really got used to having Stratford, I think. And then when I put Telegraph Hill into that same spot as my daily, my go-to, I was like, eh, I don't know if I like this as much. But now I've been smoking that more, and you'll see. It's, it's an interesting experiment. I think it's pretty cool. So um, we have our review for Mad Fiddler Flake posting on Wednesday. I think I forgot a letter somewhere in there. Uh, that'll be posting Wednesday, and then... I believe this weekend I'll be recording, I think I'll have smoked enough by then of Telegraph Hill to record my part two in the Replacing Elizabethan series, focusing on Telegraph Hill. And then after Telegraph Hill, we're going to get into Fillmore. So uh, stay tuned for that. It's been pretty, pretty interesting for me, interesting comments and feedback I've been getting on that, or I got on the first video as well. In other Stuff and Things news for the Stuff and Things Plays channel, this last week I posted the end of the Dark Souls Remastered series, so that's over. I've done it all. There's nothing more in that game that I can do. Well, probably nothing more. I think I did every single boss. I did all the expansions and DLC, so it's, it's done. And then I tried to start finishing Cuphead, which some of you may remember is this fantastic 2D side-scrolling platform, like action platform game, done in the style of a 1930s cartoon. It looks amazing. It's all hand-drawn, hand-animated. It's a great game. It's a super hard game. And I hadn't played it for about a year because when I was playing it before, um, Super Mario Odyssey came out and I started playing that on the channel and Cuphead kind of fell by the wayside. So I figured I would finish it. The problem now, and if you saw the episode that posted Friday, you will have seen this, I'm having these weird frame rate issues now. Even though my computer system is much better than it was when I was originally playing the game and had no issues with it, now I'm getting these frame rate hitches. So you're in the middle of this crazy game that takes pinpoint accuracy. You have to have just amazing timing, amazing reflexes, and then suddenly the frame rate freezes and hitches and then goes again, and suddenly you're like three quarters of the way across a screen and you're right in the middle of an enemy's projectile killing you. It makes the game very frustrating. The game was already very frustrating. It makes it way more frustrating. And I don't know that we're gonna be able to continue it if I can't find a solution. I've been scouring forums, trying to figure out what's going on. Um, I did one more episode, or no, I guess I've done two more episodes. It'll post this coming week, but I might be at the end of my rope. If any of you have any idea, if you have heard on forums, if you're in the know about particularly Cuphead, why it's having an issue on PC. It's not on uh, Xbox, it's on PC with a weird variable frame rate. Let me know in the comments below. I would love to finish that series. But so far my Google searches have not proved, fru proved fruitful. I did intersperse one episode of me playing Dragon Ball Fighters on the Nintendo Switch 
just basically as a break from Cuphead because I was getting so frustrated with the frame rate and everything. I just wanted to play something that was fun for me. Um, not that Cuphead isn't fun, it's an amazing game, but the experience of trying to record it and running into these issues was getting very frustrating. So I just posted one episode of, or I will be posting one episode of Dragon Ball Fighters. So look forward to that as well. In other news, uh, no Seahawks this week, so you don't have to worry about that. They did win last week. Excellent. Um, I had kind of a rough week, like life-wise, just obnoxious inconveniences happening. I had a breakdown, which is always really annoying. Um, and I thought I had 24-hour roadside assistance in my insurance, but then I found out I didn't. And I don't know why, I, was, I swear that I had, had signed up for that as part of my insurance policy. Um, so I corrected that after this whole thing happened, but that was after a $160 tow truck fee because I was pretty far away from my home. Um, so I had to tow my car or tow my truck all the way into town. Um, basically, I was driving, it started stumbling a bit, and then it just completely shat the bed, basically, and I popped the hood and realized that one of my spark plugs had, like, shot out of the head, and I tried to buy new spark plugs and replace them all, but the number three plug was stripped out of the head, um, which could have been worse than it was. It could have been the kind of thing where you have to take the whole head off and set it to a machine shop and have them redrill it and everything. Luckily, they were able to put a helicoil in there, but it still cost, it was 160 for the tow and 850 for doing the helicoil. And then there was another, what else? There was a vacuum leak that I had them fix and I just had them do like an oil change and stuff too while they were at it. So it was over $1,100, which was annoying. And then uh, I think they also, well, they also said that they were going to do the ignition coil and they gave me an estimate of $178 to do an ignition coil. And so I looked at what the part cost. It was 60 for the Motorcraft like OEM part and it's four screws. I guess maybe they have a minimum of one hour labor or something, but it would literally take me five minutes to put in an ignition coil. So I'm gonna do that myself. But it's always annoying to have car trouble. But I have to say, I haven't had any for years. My little Ford Ranger has been insanely reliable and a, a really nice little vehicle. So I can't complain too much. It just sucks to get stranded. It's such a horrible feeling when you just know, oh God, I'm not gonna be able to get home. So that kind of sucked, but then it's almost like when you're sick and you get better, you almost appreciate the fact that you were sick in a weird way because being stranded and then going through all the rigmarole, being without my vehicle while it was in the shop and having to use a loaner and you feel like all uncomfortable because it's not your real car. And then getting it back, you appreciate so much the fact that you have your vehicle back and you're like, I'm gonna be perfect with maintenance. I'm gonna keep my schedule 100%. I'm gonna check all these other things off. And that lasts for a while. And it's sort of like when you've been sick for a long time and then you're, you're healthy again. You're like, I'm gonna appreciate this. I'm gonna get out and I'm gonna do things. It's sort of like that. So I'm actually almost in a better mood now after all this happened. Not if I look at my savings and see a big chunk of it got taken out to fix a car, but whatever. All right, gang, we have a lot of listener feedback this week, so I wanna get into it. We're gonna start and I guess, I guess this is ask, ask Stuff and Things, hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. If you have a question for me, go to Twitter, follow at SAT Bradley. And if you have a question for me, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things, and I will try to answer it on the show. But I'm gonna start with a very lengthy missive from Scott Robert Collins. And I'm not gonna read the whole thing because it is very long. Um, but I'm going to try to skip around a little bit because he raises an interesting point and it's something that people have actually, not that he's complaining, but people have sort of mentioned in a negative light about me in the past. Not that I mind. It's perfectly reasonable criticism. But he uh, is very polite, says he enjoys the show, all that niceness. Um, mentions my pipes and whether or not I'm still like actively pursuing new pipes, which to answer your question, I'm not really... Um, I haven't been looking at pipes recently um, because I feel like I have a good stable of pipes right now. But he was mentioning my Dunhill Shell Briar and he was talking about buying a companion piece and he was talking about some Stanwell pipes and things that he had seen. 
But then we're going to get into the actual message here. He says, the next thing I wanted to ask is, have you ever looked into Briarworks pipes? They are an American pipe maker, and for modern made pipes, quite frankly, they may be the best value for craftsmanship you can find. They source all their briar from Mimo in Italy, reputed to have the best quality briar available anywhere. Uh, he's the guy that the Danish masters get their wood from. They have delved into making classic British shaped pipes of late. The C111 bull moose they do is simply an amazing pipe. Very closely inspired by the old bull moose pipes of Kamoy and Peterson from the 40s and 50s. As well though, they make a great rendition of the simple billiard, the C22. While their standard rendition features a saddle bit mouthpiece, for whatever reason, American pipers have a preference for that. I don't know if that's true or not, but they do seem to have, there do seem to be a lot of saddle bit pipes when you look at the custom American pipes that are made. Um, whatever, I'm a Canadian and my love of old British style and tapered mouthpieces run deep. I'm actually smoking a saddle bit here and this is Italian, uh, or no, yeah. Um, I don't know, I, I kind of like the saddle bit. I kind of like the traditional British shape as well though, my Dunhill. Um, he had mentions how he contacted the company owner and they did a one-off version of a tapered stem for him. Um, but he says, not to sound like a salesman, but truly you should do yourself a favor and go that same route. You get a few benefits from this. One, any of your critics, my critics, who say, or, uh, who say that you don't favor American made can be happy that you have a USA pipe. Its shape and finish are amazing. The stem work is the best I have. Uh, where is this going? The stem work is the best I have. Easily as comfortable and fitted as the best of Dunhill or Old Comoy. The stems are all hand cut and shaped. Uh, three, you get to have another pipe. Um, and then he says some more nice things and then has another question about uh, some blends, whether or not I have tried them, Red Rapparee or Black Mallory. Um, I don't think I've, I think I've had a sample of Red Rapparee or Rapparee, however you pronounce that. Anyway, um, he raises some interesting questions. I, as a lot of people, I think, have this sort of mentality where if you find something that you enjoy or a brand that you trust and like, you tend to sort of stick with that. And I'm definitely like that with pipes. Um, I have Savinelli's, I have Peterson's, I have a Dunhill, I have a Costello. And that's it, is it? I'm trying to think if I have other brands. I mean, I have some other kind of one-offs. Uh, I have a Falcon. I have uh, that Eldritch pipe that was custom handmade. But for the most part, I kind of stick to those manufacturers because I know them and I know that I like their stuff. Um, and I don't have anything in particular against American pipe makers. There aren't, there aren't any large sort of mass produced American pipes that I think are great. Um, there aren't, there isn't like an American qu equivalent of Peterson or Savinelli right now. But there are a lot of great custom American pipe makers. Um, and the only reason I haven't really gotten into that is because it's usually the case of, number one, they're expensive. And number two, you have to be kind of following their Instagram or their Twitter or their Facebook and just jump on pipes as soon as they post them. And I just usually don't do that. But it's interesting, he brought up these, this company Briarworks. I've heard of them. I had never looked at any of their pipes, never looked at their website, and I looked at some of these shapes and some of them look cool. So I would definitely, I would definitely try one of these out. They seem to range around the 110 area. So around the same price as like a lower end Peterson or Savinelli, um, or maybe like mid lower Peterson or Savinelli. So very reasonable. And uh, yeah, I would uh, definitely look in to trying a Briarworks pipe. If anyone from Briarworks is watching and you would like to send me something for free, I would love that too. I'd be happy to try it out. Because this actually leads into another question that someone asked me about manufacturers sending me things to try. Um, but we'll get into that in a moment. But thank you, Scott Robert Collins, for that message. We're going to go on here, go on, go on with Don O. Trepley at Seeds of Weeds. He says this. Hey Bradley, as your playthrough of Dark Souls draws to a close, you've mentioned with some slight lamentation, possibly picking up a PS4 to play Red Dead Redemption 2. However, I want to tell you that it has been some time since you've that if it has been some time since you've owned a PlayStation product, I have never owned a PlayStation product. This is a worthwhile purchase for the PS exclusives alone you've missed through the years. For example, Journey and Shadow of the Colossus were widely regarded as the two best games of all time, and it is generally agreed that Bloodborne is a superior game to Dark Souls 3. So have no reservations. These games alone are worth the price of entry. Take care. 
Um, yeah, there are some PS4 exclusives or just PlayStation exclusives that I would probably like to play. Um, I've watched full playthroughs of Bloodborne and I don't know that I would say it's better than Dark Souls 3. I guess I have to actually play it to say that for sure. It definitely looks cool. Um, but uh, I just, I don't want to spend $400 on a console. I like the fact that I have a PC that I can play most games on. I am irritated by console exclusives. I kind of find them annoying, especially ones that aren't first party. Like it's annoying that Bloodborne is exclusive to PlayStation because it's made by FromSoft. I find that irritating. It's one thing when Sony has a studio and they make a game for their, for their platform, that makes sense. But when a third party decides to sign an exclusivity agreement with a console maker, I find that irritating. Um, but for the most part, being on, on the Nintendo side and the PC side, I get pretty much everything and, and usually a better experience on PC. And I've avoided both the current gen consoles from Microsoft and PS and, and PlayStation because of that. I wanted to stick PC. So I really don't wanna buy a PS4 at the moment. And I think I'm just gonna have to wait for Red Dead Redemption 2 in spite of some of the great exclusives that PlayStation has. This one is from Dan, at Dan6617044. Uh, ask Bradley, do you still have Phil the Pipe? Have you considered repairing him with a hardwood plug? Um, no and no. I think I got rid of it. Or maybe I still have him. He might be around somewhere. Um, haven't really considered repairing it. it. It was a pipe that I left outside lit and left unintent, un Un uh, wow, here we go. Unattended for quite some time on a breezy day and it burned out because I just wasn't paying attention. Um, eh, I've got plenty of pipes to smoke. I don't really feel like bothering to fix it. I guess some people find that really perverse that I wouldn't fix it, but yeah, whatever. Uh, this one is from Daniel Leslie. He is requesting a voice here. It is at Daniel55230616. So two Dans in a row and two Dans who have a bunch of numbers at the end of their names. Uh, he says, and okay, Italian mobster voice. <clears throat> hey Bradley, I love your channel. Can you do an Italian mobster voice? What are your thoughts on aromatic pipe tobacco and have you ever smoked a cigar and have you tried the pipe shape like a cigar? Um, interesting questions here. He must not have seen very many episodes of the Sunday Smoke. I do not like aromatic pipe tobaccos by and large. I don't find added flavoring to be an attractive part of a blend. I like to taste the tobacco and not a topping for the most part. And then uh, I have smoked cigars um, and I've never tried the pipe shape like a cigar. I don't know what that is. Interesting. All right, the next one is from Tyler. My God, with the numbers, at Tyler, 944-21877. He says, he says, please do a Gandalf impression. Oh, Frodo, I, I can't do an Ian McClellan Gandalf. What does he say? Uh, ah, 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 ah. I just remember him laughing like a lunatic at the end of Return of the King. Gandalf. <laughs> um, you shall not pray. What would you say? It's just going to be like an old wizard voice. What would you say is your favorite fan? It doesn't sound like anything like him. Favorite fantasy series. Example, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, Narnia, etc. Um... I have read the Narnia books. I have read the Harry Potter books. I have read the Lord of the Rings. I enjoyed them all. The Lord of the Rings had a special place in my heart when I was young because I read them as a child, like probably too young to really get everything out of them because I think I started reading them when I was like 11-ish. And um, I still have like a paperback collection of the three Lord of the Rings books. And I think I had a Hobbit that was not really part of that, but they're all ripped up and just just shredded because I used to read that series every year throughout my sort of preteen and teenage years. And then they got really popular because of the Peter Jackson books. Um, but I kind of felt like they were this special secret thing that I knew about and not that many people did, even though plenty of people did, but they weren't wide, wide, blah. They weren't widely really popular at the time when I was younger. Um, so I've always loved those. 
I don't know as an adult now that they have quite the same resonance. I still think they're a good series. Um, the Harry Potter books I read because my little brother was the perfect age to be obsessed with Harry Potter, so I wanted to have something to relate to him about with. That's the sentence. Same reason I, I played Pokemon, uh, even though I was probably too old for Pokemon. But uh, they're fine. They're enjoyable. I don't think they're, you know, high literature, high art or anything, but they're good. And the Narnia books I read as a child because uh, those were kind of pressed upon me because my parents were, you know, churchgoers and C.S. Lewis. Those are ostensibly, or they're technically very Christian books, um, even though you could read them as just a normal fantasy series. And I always liked those too, but I haven't read those in years. Um, I think I would have to say something by Gene Wolfe. He's probably my favorite living writer in the sci-fi slash fantasy genre. And the Book of the New Sun is a pretty amazing series. I don't, it's kind of a combo between sci-fi and fantasy. Um, so either the Book of the New Sun by Gene Wolfe. Yeah, I don't know if you could call that fantasy though. But that's what I'm gonna pick. The Book of the New Sun by Gene Wolfe. It's probably more sci-fi than fantasy, but whatever. All right, C.W. Piperman at C. Piperman says, <clears throat> As a pipe noob, I would be interested in your take on the idea of cellaring for the coming of the tobacco apocalypse. The oft-mentioned, perhaps fanciful, calamitous hyper-regulation by the FDA that eliminates blends and net sales like a raid in a full wipe. Um, I have said this many times. I have no interest in trying to cellar tobacco or put tobacco away as a supply in the future. It's one thing to put something away and say, oh, in five or six years, this is gonna be really interesting. But to have a, a full stock of like a favorite blend that I think is going to be off the market or something, there's no way I'd ever get enough. I don't have the room. I don't have the money. Um, I just don't do that. And I don't think in those terms, if it ever gets to the point where it's impossible to get pipe tobacco at a reasonable price, I will probably just have to quit smoking a pipe or I will just do it on a rare, a rare occasion. And the content of this channel may change drastically. Um, we're already looking at the possibility that the, the fact that you can get pipe blends online in the US without paying state income taxes um, may go away completely. And if that's the case, then I will not be able to have pipe smoking as a hobby. Um, it would have to be like a rare luxury because it's just too expensive. It's $25 for a tin of pipe tobacco in Washington state. And that's ridiculous. Um, Adam at Sports and Pipes says, <clears throat> Have you ever been approached by retailers or suppliers to test or promote their products? Yes, uh, you may have seen some reviews I've done on the channel, wallets, notebooks, things like that, where people have sent me um, for review, not for promotion, but they'll send me a free product for me to review it. I have never had any pipe manufacturers. I've never had any sort of pipe related retailers send me anything. I would love it if smoking pipes or someone would be like, hey, here's a pipe. I know they can't send tobacco, but send a pipe or something. I'd love to, to review something like that on the channel. I have almost never reached out to manufacturers to ask for items to review. But I did do that, uh, number one, for Waterfield, the switch case that I have. I actually wrote to them and asked to review it, and they actually sent me one, which is weird. And then I have written to Peterson Pipes, um, and I think another pipe manufacturer, I can't remember which one, and never heard any reply from any of them. So uh, there you go. This is from Terry Everett at Bird Creator. He says... <clears throat> I've just bought a new Dunhill White Spot Dublin and Peterson Gold Spigot. They smoke like no other. Do you reckon it's like the placebo thing? They're very, very expensive, so subconsciously they smoke better than other pipes? Terry. And by the way, I hope you get the gist of my question I just posted, Brad. The placebo works because you believe it's the real thing. The pipes smoke unbelievably better than your other pipes because they're so expensive and have certain reputations? With a question mark. I know what placebo means. Um, I, I think that there is probably a small portion of placebo effect going into why you may appreciate your Peterson Gold Spigot or your Dunhill, 
But as someone who owns a Dunhill, someone who owns a Costello, um, and a few other very expensive pipes, the, the Costello is made better than most pipes that I own. The Dunhill has more care and craft in it than most pipes I own, and that does make a difference when you smoke it. I know that it's not always a one-to-one -one ratio of like, this is more expensive, therefore it's better, but I do think there's a reason why some of these manufacturers have the reputation they have, and there is a reason why some of them Maybe the the price isn't completely justified, but there is definitely um, there is something to the fact that the, the Costello that I own was gone over by a master craftsman, and that shows in the way it smokes and just the feel of the pipe and the finish and everything. It does make a difference. So maybe a little bit of placebo, but a little bit of the fact that they are just really nice quality. Um, my God. Okay, we've got two more. We're going to try to get through these. Brian Smurthwaite at BS Smurth 1974. <clears throat> Have to say I really enjoyed the Dark Souls playthrough. You had more trouble trying to stay on a legend on Orlando than with Gwyn. Love your content. Looking forward to whatever you come up with next. P.S. Have you tried Warframe yet? Um, thank you very much. I enjoyed that series a lot myself. I have not played Warframe. I am typically not someone who would play a games as service sort of game like Destiny or Warframe, things like that. I don't like events in games that are timed. I don't like playing with other people usually in general. Um, I play games to go off into my own little world as opposed to having to be a part of someone else's typically uh this is from at at nh or n heishka he says <clears throat> keeping with the theme of video games in the satp channel he says if, if you don't have another game series planned yet could you play america mcgee's grim the first episode is free and it would be a good game to play during spooktober i have never heard of that in my life, but I will look into it and get back to you. Thank you very much for your questions, everybody. Remember, if you have a question, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag ask stuff and things, and I will try to answer it on the show. But for now, my God, this has been a long Sunday smoke. I better cut it off. Thank you guys so much for watching this edition of Sunday Smoke. Until next week, until next time, until we meet again, I've been a good friend, Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things. I'll see you later. Oh. <laughs>